Greetings, uh, beautiful people. My name is Simon Javan Okelo, and we are in Seattle, Washington, at Kezira Cafe. We are here for the One Vibe African Dinner experiences, and I am truly, truly privileged to not only be here, uh, you know, with the amazing audience members who are uh, in the background. Uh, I just want to hear some voices in the background. Are you all here? <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'm here with my brother, you know, Latio Cosmos. Um, Latio is such an amazing uh, leader here in the Seattle community, particularly in the African community. He's very, very inspiring. I first connected with Latio uh, while he was still a student at Seattle University. He is the former president of the African Students Association and we've worked together in organizing Africa Day and earlier on in the life of the One Vibe African Dinner series, he was one of the people that would bring a number of students to support this amazing work that we've been doing since 2016, bringing nutritious African foods and amazing African culture here in the diaspora where you know it's almost like meeting a flower in the desert mm. but tonight we want to talk about what you do now with Natia Solutions and also before you talk about that I just want you to uh, speak about yourself you know share with us your story uh, just uh, you know in brief how did you end up in Seattle Thank you, Simon. And when you were narrating the story of how we first met, I, I didn't realize how long ago that was, if, you know. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's really been a beautiful journey. And um, just what's gotten me here, so my, a little bit about my story. Um, I'm from, originally my family's from South Sudan, and I was actually born in Kenya. And so I'm also, I claim Kenya's, you know, where I was born. And, uh, and we were in the refugee camp, and, you know, both my parents passed away there. And, um, we were, you know, immigrated over here um, as unaccompanied minors, and there are five of us. And so I'm right smack in the middle. I have two older siblings and two younger siblings. And so um, I'm not going to give the whole story, but just to say that it's been a very winding journey, uh, you know, going through foster, uh, you know, the foster care system and all of that, and then, you know, ending up uh, at Seattle University with a full scholarship and uh, playing basketball there as well for, for, for a couple of years. And all of that experience um, and then I would say sophomore year was when um, I would say that my you know my path radically changed because I was all basketball before that you know I love basketball I still do but uh, you know something changed in me um, where my priorities just drastically shifted to you know I, I was walking home one night and I just looked to my right on 12th Ave and they were having African night over there and I didn't even know what was going on, so I just walked in and um, they, they told me, yeah, this is what's happening. I was like, oh, I was just coming back from the gym. So I went home, showered, and you know, came back and just had a blast. Um, and then the next, you know, the next year, I was like, okay, so what's happening? What's up with the club? And it was like, yeah, you know, it was good this year, but you know, we don't know who's going to be president next year. Like, this is just a lot of flux happening. So I was like, you know what? Even though I've only known you guys for you know, a few months, I'm gonna step into that role and I'll just, you know, do what needs to be done in order to keep this club going. And, you know, that's, the, I mean, the rest was history. We met and we kind of, you know, the journey continued from there. Um, and then now I graduated in 2020. And, uh, you know, now we can kind of talk a little bit about the, the business, but that's, you know, I was an athlete. I wasn't doing nothing with business or, you know, entrepreneurship before that. I was all athlete, but then when my priorities changed was when, you know, basketball took a back seat and now Africa community building and a lot of what my father did in the refugee camp was kind of being lived through me um, as a community he was a community leader in the refugee camp and so when new people came to the camp uh, they, they needed to they needed to have somebody who would welcome them to the community and help them get a house or get this get that and so that spirit kind of bloomed in me when I came here um, and after that you know it just kind of basketball just fell off and that came the to the primary and so I just see it as I'm living out my father's dream but in my own way um, and you know part of that is working in business and that's how Nurture Solutions came about. I love it, I love it, I love it. Um, 
you know, your spirit, your presence, uh, whenever you see, even when you see uh, trash on the floor earlier, when this event was starting, you pick the broom and you cleaned it up, you know, and uh, you are a very solution-oriented brother, and uh, that's one thing I appreciate a lot about you. But there are many young people who are probably in the same refugee camp where you are in before that are watching this. If you had an opportunity to give them one advice, what would that be? That's, that's a very you know, deep cutting question because up until, you know, I would say recently, I didn't know what I was going to say, um, what I would say. Um, I just knew that I had to say something, I had to do something, um, and I had to be something. Mm -hmm. And so looking back to where I'm at right now, I'm not where I know I can be. And so this is just the beginning, but what I can, what I can say with full confidence is that there's a lot more out here. Not just out here in America, but in Africa too, in the refugee camp. Mm -hmm. there's, it's very, very, very rich. And one of the things that I always carry with me is value from within you know i don't i don't i don't expect value from anything outside of myself because when i expect myself to be great or i expect something to be great then i see that i have to bring it into manifestation and so to any any kid in the refugee camp you know if you're still playing pekele uh, or if you're you know making you know uh, trucks from uh, from cans that you know the, the u.s oil uh u.s oil cans you're making cars out of those use that imagination because that is something that I have leaned on so, so much as, you know, I'm out here in, you know, I'll say I call it the crucible of America because America is a crucible where, you know, it's a hot fire. You can turn out like shining gold at the end or it will burn. But either way, there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of, you know, hard work and everything involved. But that can also happen on the continent. The refugee camp doesn't have to be a a dead end, it doesn't have to be a, uh, a limbo, a place of waiting, it doesn't have to be that. We can realize the greatness from within, so it makes it irrelevant to have to come to America, it makes it irrelevant to have to go to Europe, it makes it irrelevant to have to go to Australia, but the key is with us. Nobody else has the key. And just, you know, and you're talking about the spirit earlier. That, that is the key. Once you have that spirit, anything else opens up for you. So I would say first and foremost, cultivate that spirit of value within and always go back to that and work it, work it, work it until it comes. And so thank you for asking that question. Of course. Beautiful. Now, um, just in brief, uh, you, you run an amazing company, not, not, not Share Solutions. Yeah. I want you to just speak about why you, you created it and if I am a young African immigrant like Africa who is watching this right now, um, why is it important that we have our own enterprises? Mm. Definitely. You know, this, that's a that's, yeah, great question. Um, Nurture Solutions. So the story of Nurture Solutions was uh, going into my junior year of, of college, uh, I kind of needed a job. And so I, uh, I applied to the business school and I ended up being a client account manager there. And uh, through that process, I was introduced to um, a lot of business in the central district uh, who were facing gentrification and displacement. And so uh, my first experience was working with, uh, oh, was working with the business owners there and you know, through different process, whether it's getting a, a lease in a new building or business planning just, or marketing, whatever it is that I could, I could help the client with, that's what I did. And that really helped me learn so much about business because I wasn't... I wasn't an entrepreneur before that, but coming in from the side of helping people te with technical, um, you know, just your financials or whatever, and connecting them to the right resources, you know, made me realize, wait, I'm studying community development. That's, that's what I got my degree in, but we're speaking mostly about policies and international policies and international this and policy that, policy this, policy that, and then looking at the reality of what's going on, policies, they're nice, you know, you can read them, you can look at them, but they don't actually, you know, they can change communities, but what really changes community is your economic stability. Um, can, you, can you eat? What can you eat? What can you afford to eat? Can you sleep? Where can you afford to sleep? And those types of things took a front, front uh, seat in my, you know, as I'm looking forward to what am I gonna do once I graduate? 
I was like, I was thinking about I could go work at a nonprofit and you know do the, that type of work, but you know being introduced to a, a business owner who we will later, we will also speak to later, but introduced to business owners who are actually doing work in the community and they they don't have to be at the policy making table to make a difference in the community, and that radically shifted. You know, I'm like, man, I'm going here for four years studying community development and policy work and all of these different things, but for me, my spirit is telling me that. That is where I should be. That is where, you know, where I will blossom, and that's where I will serve in the best way that I can serve. And so, um, after you know, after graduation, you know, I took my few months of. It wasn't really vacationing because it was the summer of 2020. So there was a lot of um, there was a lot happening during that time. But um, I ended up working at a nonprofit for six months, and then figured, you know, um, that wasn't the place for me anymore. And literally from quitting to starting my business, it was a day. I was like, as soon as I left that, that night, got everything in order and started my business. And you know, it just, it was, it was a long journey, but the, the final decision to start Nurture Solutions um, came just overnight, really. Um, and the, one of the big reasons why I started Nurture Solutions is because while I was in college, I was looking for jobs, looking for internships, um, it was over at, you know, you had to go work at Amazon or you had to go work at Microsoft. For me, as a community-minded person, I'm, I'm saying, what are those companies contributing to our community? You know, they may be huge, they may be massive. What, are they, what value are they actually bringing into our community? And so when, when I graduate, I was like, I'm not, I'm not going out there to put my labor on the market for something that is not returning to my community. That's why I went to the nonprofit and then ended up starting my own business. But Nurture Solutions is... My, is my solution to the problem that I faced of how does a community-minded African person use their learning process because as you're learning, you're doing some good. So instead of learning and learning to uh, do whatever you need to do at Microsoft and they get to absorb all of that excess talent and creativity that you would have, why don't you learn it within your own community? Working for a business like Kezira Cafe, they, they need a lot of help with different things. He's working back there on our own. But there are people in our community, young people, who have the skills and talents, or they need to develop it, or are in the process of developing it, what better place to do it than a place like this that you can have a dinner like this. I don't, I don't know if Microsoft can have something like this for you. <laughs> I don't know if Amazon can do something for you. Like the conversation we have at the table, they can't provide that for you, but that is provided for you here by community members who are working off of passion, who are working out of love, and that is a part of it. That is why Inertia Solutions is really, it's been going for a year. You know, I, I've gone up and down, but it's going to live and it's living. And so, you know, starting with that mission, it's brought me here today to work with sp amazing people like Simon and Nikki back there and so many other business, African businesses up and down um, Rainier. Um, and so for me, that's, it's, it's very, very doable for a lot of people. It's just our young people have to turn their minds to let, let I have to go somewhere else to gain skills and knowledge. And this also goes back to the conversation about what's going on in Africa in the refugee camp. We don't have to go anywhere. We don't have to look to anybody else to teach us anything to, you know, you have to cultivate what you need first. And then if, you, if, you, if, it's, if it's a better option to go outside, then go there from a place of stability. Don't compromise yourself because that's what happens. When you go someplace because you need something, you put yourself in a compromising position. And, my spirit is telling me the time is over for us as African people to put ourselves in compromising positions in order to get our daily bread. That, those days are over. We have to make decisions out of a different mindset. Like, if I have to be hungry for two days in order for me to get to a position where I can eat for six months, let's do it. Let's not sacrifice ourselves, let's not sacrifice our morals because the more we compromise, we give away our natural resources, but more importantly, we're giving away a part of our spirit. And so, to keep that spirit, Nurture Solutions is working here to help our students come here like let's put our spirit into our community and let's build it and we have the skills talent and we don't need nobody else's money we got all we need right here i love that i love that so you know you have to feed that spirit some good food Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we're here tonight you know we are here because one vibe africa in partnership with Seattle Foundation is, uh, you know, bringing back the One Vibe African Dinner experiences to promote African nutrition, to promote the kind of conversations that we are having during these dinners. 
and to deepen our our, our relationships with one another mm -hmm. why is this important to you because without you this would not be possible <laughs> uh, thank you for that uh, but it's definitely possible because you're you're here contributing nikki's back there contributing we got alan we have so many we have austin so many people and the audience too so it's like we're all putting in something and that's what it all it is it's exchange of energy and exchange of food and food you know hey it's the best exchange of energy that i know of in terms of you know we put it out here everybody i know had delicious something to eat um and so for me it's just about that exchange like you're saying exchange of good energy having hard conversations and then wash it down with some good food and that's all it is you know just let's keep it let's keep that spirit of just sharing with one another and that's why these things are so important and it builds community um to be together to eat together that's one of the things big things about africa is like you know the way we eat it's communal eating when you eat and that's part of senegalese culture actually you know we're having senegalese food today but traditionally the family would have a big bowl um and then everyone sits around in a circle to eat together out of that same bowl and that tradition we may not be doing it perfectly like that but in that same spirit that's why these dinners are so important is sharing in food which means sharing in spirit and creating community together thank you so much thank you so much uh, a big shout out to Yirim Sek who is Senegalese American and is in the board of uh, directors of One Vibe Africa and uh, if you're watching this uh, on YouTube uh, remember to subscribe to One Vibe TV and uh, remember to continue you know supporting the amazing work that we're doing both in Seattle and in Kenya is there anything i didn't ask you that you want to add <laughs> i don't know uh anything i need to add oh, honestly no nah, i think everything is said and what's not said is felt so thank you again for this opportunity thank you so much i appreciate um, it i'm grateful <laughs>